Y'all ready for the word tonight? Yes. Amen, amen. Welcome everyone to the Hand of God ministry tonight. We're going to continue our study from last Wednesday. We are in the book of Acts. As some like to refer to it as the gospel of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The introduction of the Holy Spirit to the church at large. Amen. amen. So we're going to start in the book of uh, Acts chapter 12. And we're going to continue where we left off. We left off with Apostle Peter being set free from prison by an angel of the Lord. Y'all remember that? Yes. The angel came down, had to strike Peter on the side to wake him up because he was fast asleep between two soldiers. He had no problems. Amen? Amen. He had no troubles. Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, we have no problems. We have no troubles. Hallelujah. Amen. Like Peter did. Thrown into prison for preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's fast asleep between two soldiers, chained. And the angel steps down, steps into that prison, strikes Peter on the side to wake him up because he's asleep. And Peter has to get up and walk through the prison doors. Amen. I'm going to tell you tonight, saints, that the angel of the Lord is here to set you free. Yeah. Amen. But sometimes he's got to strike you a little bit to wake you up. Amen. Because some of you have fallen asleep, not in a good way. Amen. How many knows that sin will put you to sleep? Amen. How many knows the world will put you to sleep? Amen. How many knows the devil will put you to sleep? Amen. It's time. The, the time is now to wake up out of that slumber, Christian. Yes. Yes. Because it's high time, the Bible says, that his drawing near is soon to come. Amen. Amen. It says to look up from where our redemption draws. Amen. Now, amen. We must continue to look up from where our redemption is coming from. Amen. Instead of looking down to the things on the earth and being caught up with the things in the earth. Yeah. We must not become attached to anything in the earth. Amen? Amen. We use them in moderation, but we're not to become attached to anything. At least our identity be caught up in those things. Hallelujah. Amen. We stay attached to the vine who is Christ Jesus. Yes. So that we can continue to have our identity in Christ Jesus. Amen. I got to just speak a little bit by the Holy Ghost. Okay, can y'all let me do that for a minute? Yes. We have our identity in too many different things, especially the day and age we live in. It may be in a sports figure. It may be in money. It may be in materials. It may be in your boyfriend or girlfriend, husband or wife. It, it may even be in the church or pastor that you belong to. Amen. Come on, man. Yeah. Your identity must be in Jesus Christ and Him only. Yeah. You must build your foundation on. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because everything in the earth is what? Passing, Passing away. away. Your sports figure. Your Hollywood star, they're going to fail you. Amen? Yeah. Man will fail you. Amen. The Bible says man will fail you. Amen. We're not to lean on the arm of flesh because the arm of flesh will fail you, but Jesus Christ will never fail you. Amen. Because God says, I don't change or shift on you like the world does. I don't change my mind. You can entrust yourself to the written word of God Amen. because it's true. Every word in the Bible is true Amen. and you can throw yourself upon that trust. Hallelujah. Amen. And your identity is in Christ because that cannot be taken away from you. Amen. Everything is shifting in the world that we live in right now. It's and it's getting worse. It's and the Bible says the evil shall rise and get worse. Yeah. Men lovers of themselves boastful and proud, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure rather than God. In the last days, the Bible says, it'll be a great falling away from the church of the living God. A great falling away from the Word of God. No one wants to hear the gospel anymore. No one wants to hear preaching against sin anymore. That you've broken the commandments of God. That you've got to repent. You have to ask God for forgiveness. Amen. And the blood of Jesus will forgive you. Amen. Hallelujah. But they want to gather themselves teachers that will tell them what their itching ears want to hear. I want you to tell me how good I am. I want you to motivate me, Pastor. I want you to tell me about my destiny. 
And so they're flocking to the churches and they're bigger than ever because they are infested with program after program after program after program. Amen. Super Bowls and Starbucks inside the church house now in these last days. <laughs> That's why you see our church so small. You're probably sitting in the church wondering, where is everybody at? Well, that's where they are. Amen. But you have to remember Jesus. Yes. You have to go in there and be like a detective when you're in the Word of God. Hallelujah. And see everything that Christ said. How the, how the true church is going to look. This is what the true church looks like, saying. Amen. i got to tell you, this is what it looks like. Amen. Yes. But we know we're doing what God has called us to because of the fruit yes. that is in your life. Yes. We sit with some of you sometimes. Yes. And we hear the life you're living now because you've been with us at such a length yes. of time. Amen. And we see the evidence of the ministry that has gone forth over your life and the fruit that's coming forth from your life. Amen? Amen. Yes. Because there's deliverance. There's healing that's taking place in your Amen. life. Amen. Amen. You just got to stick around long enough. Jesus said, narrow is the road. Amen. Narrow is the road. Amen. Narrow yes. is the road. And very straight. And he says, only a few. Only a few. Only a hand few is going to find that straight and narrow. Broad is the way of destruction. Broad. Many ways that have come into the earth by the devil that show you the way to God. Amen. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Apostle Paul said, I don't come preaching high-sounding ideas or man's wisdom. I come preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified and what He did for us at the cross. Why? Least the power of the cross be lost. When was the last time you heard the cross preached? The blood of Jesus saves. Amen. We need to hear that in these last days that Jesus Christ is still saving. 2,000 years later, He's still saving. Amen? Yes. Amen. Y'all got me preaching. Here. Amen. Now let's get to teaching now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. I want you to go with me in the book of Acts. Someone needed to hear that tonight. Yes, amen. Every one of you here at the Hand of God ministry need to know that you're in a true church. Amen. Why does the Holy Ghost operate in this ministry? Why does the anointing flow in this ministry? Because the Bible says that I be lifted up. I be lifted up. Not Pastor Jesse. He said if I be lifted up. And he was lifted up 2,000 years ago upon that cross. He was lifted up so he can draw men now. He made a way where there seemed to be no way to get back to the Father. Our sin separates us. From having a relationship with God. Every one of us were born into the earth. Sinful. Amen. Amen. We were born into, the, into this world lost. And without God. On our way to the place of eternal damnation. Yes. Hell itself. Every one of us bound for hell. You can't say that word anymore in church. Oh my gosh. Not that. Not hell. <laughs> you can't say that word in church, pastor. Hell itself but Christ came and died for every one of us the sins of the world were put upon Christ at Calvary and he opened up a way for what was lost in the garden of Eden because of disobedience and we were separated because of sin and now everyone is born into the earth sinful because of what Adam and Eve did that's why as a little kid when we're born into the earth a little baby we are bent on evil. Our heart is bent towards evil because we are sinful. We live in a sinful nature. Yes. But oh God, He so loved the world. He sent His one and only Son to die for every one of us that whosoever believes shall have everlasting life. Yes. Hallelujah. Now that your sins have been washed in His blood, you have a new relationship with Christ Jesus and with God the Father because of what Jesus Christ has done at the cross. How many knows that's good news yes. and that's the gospel that Apostle Paul was preaching to these places? Yes. Come on, Matt, well, amen. amen. So let's go to the book of Acts. How many knows that's the good news? Yes. That's Jesus Christ that saves. I gave you the whole gospel in about two minutes. 
that you should be a walking track. Amen? <laughs> We're going to start in verse 20. Are you with me? So it says, Now Herod was very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon. Did I say that right? Tyre and Sidon. I said it right. Correct. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. So they sent a delegation to make peace with him because their cities were dependent upon Herod's country for food. Let's keep going and go all the way down to where it says, verse 21. And an appointment with Herod was granted. When the day arrived, Herod put on his royal robes, sat on his throne, and made a speech to them. The people gave him a great ovation, shouting, It's the voice of a God, not of a man. Stop there. Now you remember last Wednesday. This is Herod Agrippa. He just got through killing the first apostle, which was James. He killed him by the sword. Now he's persecuting the church. He just put Peter, Apostle Peter, in prison, and he's been set free. The Jews are so angry, and he's lost the favor with the Jews, so he's going to another country so he can generate some favor in this other city. And now that he's doing this, watch what happens. That's why he's over here. Verse 22. The people gave him a great ovation, shouting, It's a voice of a God, not of a man. Verse 23. Instantly, an angel of the Lord struck Herod with a sickness because he accepted the people's worship instead of giving glory to God. So he consumed, he was consumed with worms and he died. Whoa. Now you have to understand, this is in the New Testament. This is in the New Testament church. In the book of Acts. He's standing up. Now this is Herod Agrippa. He made this great speech. And now the people are sending him praises. And not giving glory to God. But he's receiving the glory to himself. Amen. Amen. So he's accepting the praise of man. And not correcting the people. The one thing that can exalt a man of God, even a novice, even someone who's barely becoming a Christian, who just became a Christian. That's why the Bible says, don't put a, a new believer in the pulpit or a novice behind the pulpit until first he's been tried a little bit in church. Amen? Amen. He has to have his character developed. He has to be able to absorb those praises and say, wait a minute, it's not me that is doing this, but it is God that's doing Amen. it. And I give him the glory for what's going on in me. Amen. Amen. And we get to that place where God starts doing something in our lives. He starts setting us free. We start receiving some healing. We start becoming prosperous. We see that we're touching things by our hands and things are starting to prosper. Hey, my mind is starting to work better. I'm starting to comprehend better. Amen. And you have to understand that has nothing to do with you. Amen. It's the grace of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ going to work in you. Amen. What's your part? What do you have to do? Just stay attached to the vine. So that you can continue to be nurtured and nourished. Well, well I don't understand, Pastor. What do you mean by staying hooked to the vine? That means you stay hooked to Christ. If you're here today and you're still stumbling back and forth and you're still in and out of the world but you have a repentant heart and you're in a place that you haven't rejected Christ that's not the same thing. You're still hooked to the vine. Hallelujah. Come on now. Amen. You're just in that place where you're learning how to die to yourself daily. Amen. God is doing a mighty work in your life Amen. and it doesn't feel good. If you had completely rejected Christ and said, you know what? I'm not even going to try and live for God anymore. I'm going to start to detach myself from the vine. Detaching yourself from the vine means distancing yourself. Not only from Jesus Christ and your relationship with Him, but from the local church that God has called you to. And if you're called to this local branch and this ministry... Do you know that you receive nourishment for your soul yes. when you come and attach yourself to this local church? Amen? Yes. So if you've been called to this ministry, 
you got to stay long enough so you can see fruit from you coming to the ministry. Amen. Come on now. Don't be a plant that plants themselves, then uproots and then goes somewhere else. You didn't stay long enough to see if there's going to be any fruit that comes out of there. Amen. And that's what happens to a lot of Christians, especially in this day and age. It gets too hot in that ministry. Amen. The fire gets turned up in your life and God starts dealing with your heart. Things start getting uprooted out of your life. You know what? I can't be here no more. I've been here one month. And it's getting too hot here. My <laughs> first couple of weeks were great. I felt the goose pimples and it was really fun, you know. I really enjoyed myself going to that ministry. You know? oh, and now God says, now I need to require something from you. What? 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 All the blessings, all the anointing of God being poured over you, all the love of God being poured over you. That's great. That's wonderful. That's how God does it. Because He's a good guy. Amen. He's a good father. Amen. But there's a time in your Christian walk, you got to put away childish things. Amen. And you got to start maturing Amen. in your faith. Amen. Yes. And get off the milk. Yes. The milk is, oh, I just want all the blessings and the love of God and all of the, the goose pimples. And the Lord said, no, 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 You got to get on the meat now of my word. Yes. You got to get to the meat of God's word, Saint Hallelujah. Christian. Yes. Otherwise, you'll start to die in this place. Yes. You'll die anywhere. Yes. Amen. The meat of God's word is being able to be instructed in righteousness. Amen. When the prophet Amen. comes to you and says, Thus saith the Lord, you've got to come out of that wickedness. You've got to put that bottle down. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. And you don't get your feelings hurt. I know that's the Holy Ghost speaking to me. Yes. Thus saith the Lord, yes. the Holy One of Israel. It's time to put that down before judgment comes into your house. Yes. Amen. That's a good man of God that will warn his people. A good man of God that will instruct his people. But it doesn't happen right away. You enjoy the milk of God's word. The love of God. Because that's how he wins you in. Is with his love. Amen? Amen. And then he starts to require of you. And then you're gone. <laughs> you got to stick around a little while. Even when it gets uncomfortable, stay planted where God has you amen. and watch the fruit that comes out of your life. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Good. That's why you see it empty in here. I'm giving you some truth. Why no one sticks into the ground? Yes. Because the roots start going down deep. There's accountability in your life that comes about. Things start getting closer. Come on now. Yes. Speaking to somebody. Yes, amen. Yes. amen. So what happened here to this man receiving all this praise? Verse 23. I want to see this. Instantly, because he didn't give God the glory, an angel of the Lord struck Herod with a sickness because he accepted the people's worship instead of giving glory to God. So he was consumed with worms and he died. Now one stop there. Because the book of Psalms says this in, one, in Psalms 105. Do not touch my anointing. Amen. Amen. Okay? Do not touch my anointing and do my prophets no harm. King Herod, what did he do? He touched God's anointing. Amen. Amen. Further down in the beginning of the book of Acts, the Pharisees were going crazy because they wanted to dismantle the 12 disciples. We got to put a stop to this. And one of the Pharisees rose up and said, you need to leave these men alone. Because you may find yourself fighting against God himself. Amen. Yeah, Are you with true. me? Yes. You do not touch God's anointed. And you do his prophets no harm. I made that mistake one time in my life. And I've told you that testimony. Where I touched God's anointed. Because I didn't like how I felt in that little church. Because God was dealing with me by the Holy Ghost to get rid of some things. So I started persecuting the man of God. Not realizing what was going on within me was a war inside me because God was dealing with me. Amen. And telling me to come out of the world. It's time to come out of the world, son. You've been there long enough. Amen. If you stay there longer, you may very well shorten your life. Amen. And for some of you, and even some of those in this ministry, there's judgment that's coming into your home if you don't start coming out of the world. It's true. Amen. It's true. I'm telling you by the Holy Ghost. It's true. You cannot remain stiff-necked. The Bible says that in the Old Testament, Israel was a stiff-necked generation. That means I'm not turning my head from nothing you say, God. 
<laughs> mm. That's the generation we live in now. Amen. You're not going to tell me how I can live my life. You're not going to tell me what sexuality I got to be. I'm going to get to express myself however I want to be. Stiff neck generation. Amen. God says there's a curse on me. Yeah, that's right. Are you with me? Yes. Do you think God deals with the lost? In the New Testament, does God deal with the lost? He doesn't deal with the lost. Most of what's written in the New Testament is for the church. Amen. Amen. What the lost need is they, get, they need to get saved. Amen. You need to get Christ in them. Amen. Because none of this won't do anything without the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is who forms Christ in you. Amen. He's the one that gets the junk out. Hallelujah. Yes. You cannot do it on your own. That's why Jesus died on the cross. He says, if I don't go away, I cannot send the Comforter. I cannot send the Holy Ghost. And when He comes, He will what? Convict the world of sin. Amen. And convince of righteousness. Ooh, yes. He convinces us, the Holy Ghost. And He identifies with our hearts that we're righteous before God. You ever feel that cleansing power when you sin? Christian, I'm talking to the Christian. Because y'all still sin, amen? We all sin still, right? Hallelujah. Yeah, <laughs> Come on now. Take that halo off. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you about the cleansing power. Because you have that covenant amen. with God because of Jesus. Amen. When you miss it and you're in that time and you know your rights and privileges. You know how to get back up because you know you can enter into his gates. You know you can enter to that place and ask God for forgiveness. And he'll forgive you every time. That blood will wash you. You may have to spend a little time there depending on how mature your relationship is. Amen. Because the more mature it is, the longer your relationship you have with Christ, guess what? You may have to tarry there a little longer in prayer. You may have to stay there and linger there for a little while until you feel that, you'll feel the cleansing power of the blood of Christ come over you and you'll know that you are now standing righteous before God once again. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. That Amen. blood it cleanses the conscious minds of men. When sin burdens you with guilt and shame and condemnation and makes you feel ugly, guess what? The blood of Jesus, when you pray and ask God to forgive you in His name, do you know the blood has a cleansing effect on your conscious mind? You don't even remember. What was it? I, I did it like two hours ago. I messed up really bad two hours ago, and it feels like a month ago. Amen. 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 I'm going to say it again. Amen. I'm going to say it again because that's powerful. Amen. That's how powerful the blood is. That's how powerful the cleansing power of the blood is. That when you ask God to forgive you, He applies the blood of Jesus upon your conscious mind. Amen. And He wipes it away and clean is your conscious mind. Amen. And why does He do that? He frees you up. So you have the freedom to lift hands up to a holy God and not feel ashamed. Amen. 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 I know the cleansing power of the blood. And I need that cleansing power daily. And so do you. Amen. Come on now. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Isn't that good? Yes. So do not touch, not, do not touch God's anointed. And do his prophets no harm. And you'll be fine. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Acts 13, I want to start in verse 1. You know what, let's go to verse 24 and we'll finish up uh, chapter 12 for a minute. It says, meanwhile, look what's going on. He says, meanwhile, after the angel struck Herod with sickness and he died. Meanwhile, the word of God continued to spread. And there were many new believers. Hallelujah. I tell you, when the fear of God hits, People come to get saved. Amen? Amen. When Harvey hit, oh, well, nobody came, but praise God. We're still believing. Amen? <laughs> Sometimes it takes four or five of those before people wake up. Amen. And even in your own life. Amen? Don't be that person that you have to have five Harveys come into your life. God doesn't send the storms. Now you got to understand that. But He'll use those situations to stir people up so that they can get saved. We see the signs all around us. You saw what just happened in Las Vegas. It's all over the news right now. We are in the last days, church. We can be raptured at any minute. I say I put my mic down, and sometimes I do this. Okay, Lord, I'm ready. Amen. Okay, I still got some work to do. Okay, amen. What Apostle Paul said, if I'm still here in this body, he says, it's because I still got some work to do. Hallelujah. 
it's better for you that I remain, Apostle Paul said, so I can store up any area that may be lacking in your faith. Yes. Mm. Yes. That's what the five-fold ministry is for. That's why you come sit in the church, because we reside in those offices. And that's the way Jesus set up the government of the church in the earth. Amen. The apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, and pastor. Amen. Amen. On, yes. So the word is just blowing up here because of what happened. When Barnabas and Saul, verse 25, when Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission to Jerusalem, remember they went there to help with the famine that was going on. And they carried the money from Antioch to Jerusalem to relieve them. You remember that? Yes. Now they're going back to Antioch. Oh boy, they would love to stay in Jerusalem with their brothers in Christ, with the original 11 disciples, because one went to, to, to where he was supposed to go to, Judas Iscariot, the one that betrayed Jesus. Yes. So now he's on his way back to Antioch to continue the ministry of the gospel of the Lord yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. Every one of you have an assignment. Amen. Amen. Amen? And your assignment becomes more clear the longer you stay hooked up to the vine. Yes. Amen. If you're detached from the vine, your mission, your assignment will not be clear on what you're supposed to be doing in the earth. Amen. What you are doing, brother, Louis, sister, Eve, Sister Norma, your time together in prayer, coming together, is an assignment. It's by divine call of God. Amen. It's divine. Amen. Because the anointing is there. Yes. And the Lord told me to tell you three that God is doing something right now in your prayer time together. He says, continue in what I've called you to do. And that's the word to you, all three by the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 You see, Things start to come about. This is an exciting... I, I, can, I can't tell you how long I was in the world. And I did everything the world had to offer. I was attached to drugs, alcohol, everything you could possibly consume. I consumed. Amen? Amen. And I got to say, this life, way better. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you're going to have your trials. You're going to have your hardships. You're going to have your sufferings. Jesus warned the church. He warned the disciples. That's going to happen. And we've warned y'all over and over. Many are the trials that you're going to face Amen. before entering into heaven. Amen. He says, but be of good courage. Yes. I, I, I have overcome, overcome the world. Yes. Woo! He says, faith, this is how you overcome the world. Yes. Faith in Christ. Amen. Faith in Jesus. Yes. The life you live, the life I live in this flesh and blood body, we live by faith Amen. in the great I am. Amen. Yes. It's through the Spirit of the living God Amen. that we walk, we go here, we yes. do this, we can endure. You cannot endure the temptation that's in the earth right now. Mm -hmm. Not right now you can. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in the last days it will be difficult to serve God. Amen. And we are living in that day and age. Yes. There is sexual immorality running rampant in the earth yes. right now. Yes. You walk out and you're going to see sexual immorality everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere you go. And the way you live holy, and how you live holy, how you live a separated life, is you live it through the spirit of the living God. Yes. And you stay attached to the vine. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Come on now. Yes. So Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission. Oh boy. I can't wait till I finish my mission. I can go be with my Lord. Me and Pastor Lisa talk about that all the time. <laughs> we, can't get off this. we can't wait we're there watching TV on the couch she looks at me and I already know what she's going to say I just can't wait for the rapture <laughs> I just can't wait for the you know that's every Christian's hope yes. yeah. we're not going to be left here for the condemnation and the judgment that's coming upon the earth we're going to be raptured amen. out of here. That's amen. amen. That's, That's why the Bible amen. says, look up from where your help comes from. Yes. I'm looking yes. up all the time, Lord. Because yes. any minute, Lord, I'm out of here, amen. Lord. Woo! And so long as I still see her here, yes. then I'm still here. Yes. If I don't see her here anymore, I did something wrong. <laughs> Boy, but Jesus said, there'll be many in that day that says, they come to me and says, Lord, Lord. Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons? 
Yes. Didn't I do all these great and wonderful things for you? Didn't I go to church? Didn't I clock in? And I was there at church on Sunday. Hear me by the Holy Ghost. Yes. Did I not pull? Did not put my tithes and offerings in every time? Yes. Those are all great and wonderful, and that's part of your Christian walk. Yes. But He says, "I never knew you. These things you did, they weren't on to me." You have to have your heart right with God. Amen. The only way you're entering into heaven is through Jesus Christ and what He did for us at the cross. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus sets men free. Amen. Amen. And every one of us here, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, we're waiting. That is the Christian's hope. We're waiting for that day when He raptures us out of here. Amen. And she looks at me and says, how much worse can it get? You see what happened in Vegas. You see all of the events that are taking place in the earth right now. That is the signs. Though we don't know the day, nor the hour, nor the time of the return of Christ. He did that for a reason. Why? Because if He told us the time, we live like the devil up until one minute before He comes. I got time because you know the blood of Jesus. He's bound by His word. And He'll have to forgive you because that's God. Right? Are you with me? Yes. He says, yes. can't do it because you got to walk it out in faith. Yes. That means you got to trust Him all the way to the end. Amen? Yes. Amen. And we have this false notion of what Christianity is. And it's been painted in America, in this modern society, that I can live however I want and still go to heaven. Yes. Nope. <laughs> That's a lie from the pit of hell. And those are doctrines of demons that, yes. that come from the pulpit. That are telling you you can live however you want and you're going to go. It's not going to happen, saints. I'm coming back for a what? A surprise. Without blemish. Amen. Church. That doesn't mean you're perfect. That's not what it means. It means spotless and blemish. You're attached to the vine. Amen. Though you miss it, you're attached to the vine. Amen. Though you miss it, you're attached to the vine. Amen. Amen. Though you miss it, you're attached to the vine. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's good news. Yes. You don't live a life of habitual sinning. Yes. You're one that God's dealing with. Yes. And He's calling you to come out from amongst yes. them and be separate. Amen. He says, Don't touch the unclean thing, and I'll receive you. Amen. We have too many Christians out there touching unclean things mm -hmm. and believing somehow they still have a relationship with God. Now, grace may still be in there operating in their life. And we don't know the wooing and the drawing of God's Spirit in their life in that situation because He did it for me. Even when I made my bed in hell, He was with me. He'll do the same. But you don't want to exhaust or frustrate the grace of God. You don't know how long before you go past that place where judgment comes upon you and He gives you over to what's in your heart. And that's the judgment that comes to us. It's the judgment of God taking His hand completely off the sin and saying, go ahead, do what you want. Close your Bibles.